all the young ones and for all the new people coming into the NHS. You all deserve better. I've seen a lot of changes over the years. A lot more better. It's getting far worse. And I'm really, really glad to believe in it. Too much paperwork. Too much not caring about the staff that work in the NHS. I think we've all had enough and you all need better pay. We need more encouragement to come into the NHS, whether we're cleaners, porters, ambulance people, office workers, you all need fair pay. organisation I work for are helping to facilitate all these demonstrations of healthcare workers and thank you for everyone who's come out today and sure that they still believe in the NHS because this is what this is about. The government's going to go try and make it about whether or not we're going to give nurses a pay rise, whether or not we've greedy. We've lost 20% of our wages since 2010 and that's the reason why people are going to food banks. That's the reason why you've got people struggling to be able to pay their mortgages. And so that's why we're here today, is to make sure that we raise pay, improve staffing in the NHS and keep our patients safe. Because when that second peak comes, it's not going to be Boris, it's not going to be Dominic Cummings that are going to be the ones going and dealing with this. It's going to be all those lot who are on the front lines. So thank you for coming today. <laughs> proud to be here today and to stand with health workers. Uh, I did work in the NHS for a good few years. This was my hospital. I worked there 30 years as a consultant paediatrician but retired a couple of years ago. I feel I'm almost back home when I come into the square. I spent more time in the hospital, I think, than I did at home with my family over many years. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've heard a lot of very important uh, facts already uh, this morning, uh, but I think what unites us all is a love of the NHS and the determination that staff will be properly valued and properly paid. <clears throat> we have a government that really shamefully has thrown hundreds of millions of pounds at his private sector friends to fund secret contracts related to COVID that simply haven't worked. For example, 10 billion going to Serco for a so-called well-beating track and trace system which simply doesn't do the job it must do if we're all going to be protected. In fact, the sad thing is the only thing we're well beating up is the death rate where of course we, we stand out as being exemplary. So they've got plenty of money to share with their private sector friends. <clears throat> they stood outside for 10 nights on Thursdays clapping but then have failed to give the same people they're clapping a pay rise, despite the massive erosion of pay from austerity that has been referred to. So a 20% real cut in spending power. And it's very clear that the public actually want nurses, healthcare workers and others to be given a significant pay rise in recognition of their professional commitment and hard work during the pandemic. Clapping is not enough, it was never enough, and in fact, it's a rank hypocrisy if it's only clapping and it's not matched by deeds. We have to remember that this government is ideologically opposed to public services. It doesn't like the NHS, it never has done. There was a battle to set up the NHS resolved in 1948 when the private hospitals were nationalized but there's people who've never forgiven or forgotten that defeat and who've worked ever since to turn things back and so much of the time when we hear about necessary reform and modernization you look at the details and it's actually turning the clock back to how it was before 1948 with private companies a fragmented system and charitable hospitals Recently, the government failed to take the opportunity of keeping the NHS out of trade deals with all the Tory MPs voting against specifying the NHS should not be in trade deals. 
What does that mean? It means the NHS is on the table, as it has been for a long time, for private companies to come in and take chunks out of it. And that really, I think, highlighted their attitude to the NHS, which there's good bits of it, bits that can be sold off because they're profitable, and then there's bad bits of it. Those are things that many people depend on for their health care. But they don't believe that there should be good quality health care free for everyone. And they don't believe that health workers should be well paid because they have no ideological commitment to public services. This has been part of a strategy, as I said, to undermine the NHS for many years. How better to undermine a public service than to underfund it? And slowly the cracks begin to appear, people become disillusioned and they say public services don't work, we've got to do something different. But this has been a consequence of deliberate underfunding, uh, not that the NHS is outdated or inefficient. <clears throat> co-chair of people NHS public nationally and chair of the Leeds group and we've been campaigning for a fully funded public NHS, a publicly provided NHS and a publicly accountable NHS and one of the main things that we argue for in our new strategy document for the plan to rebuild the NHS is that you have to respect staff, you have to care for your staff, you have to support them and you have to pay them properly and that's how you get good care at the end of the day uh, and that is absolutely vital and that's why in comp many of our groups around the country today are standing shoulder to shoulder with health workers and supporting your demands so, <clears throat> so our message to Johnson and to Sunak is listen to the public do the decent thing recognize that it's long-term investment in a public NHS and a public health system that will provide the best possible care for all and help us to protect against the effects of COVID which are ongoing and of course future pandemics which will undoubtedly come along. Support the NHS, support NHS and care staff, give them a pay rise now. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is from the Unison Health Centre and it's Adrian O'Malley. Tannis from Leeds uh, Trades Council. Um, we still represent over 30,000 workers across the city, um, including healthcare staff uh, who work over in that hospital there. And I'd like to put a thank out to them who helped me sort of write this um, today. So, to our delegates who, um, or from our delegates who work in the hospitals, we've had reports of all grades standing up and delivering the most wonderful, compassionate, and skilled care during the pandemic. They've adapted to new roles, learning new skills and learning on the job roles, which would normally have months of induction. This said, this is, they're doing this despite being scared, feeling vulnerable and having tears behind their masks and having a million questions, mainly what am I taking home to my family? We've had the Thursday night um, claps, uh, which have obviously have been help warm, uh, heartwarming and a great pick me up when tired and low, but claps do not pay bills. Many NHS workers uh, are struggling to make en ends meet. Thousands of nurses are forced to rely on food banks because they cannot afford to eat. And as I say, in my own job, um, I regularly come across NHS trying to put budgets together for NHS workers who can't even cover their basic bills. 
So discussing, um, you know, what, what's happening at the moment, obviously you're 20% down on the pay in the last 10 years. They've seen many colleagues on, the, on very minimal wages, still facing up to the dangers of the virus and still contributing as vital cogs in the great institution that is the NHS. To the cleaners, porters, admin staff, and all those grades where your pay is, is, is laughable and the whole, this whole rally salutes you. We are fighting uh, to get the wages you've earned even before this horrible virus. We know our worth, the contracts have changed and they're not going to accept a compromise. They want what well, we want a reward. We want wages, uh, a wage that you deserve and a wage you can earn and live off. Uh, no backing down if the government want a fight. Bring it on. The goons in this government are easy pickings in a scrap after what they've faced all year. We have the strength, uh, and you guys have the strength and support of the trade unionists and activists in Leeds behind you. And I'm not going to cover what Alex, because he sort of summed it quite, uh, quite well in terms of we urge you, obviously, join the union, get involved, get active, and uh, sort of get your union to affiliate to the Trades Council to get, uh, as well. Because together we can fight. Um, if we don't fight, obviously, you're not going to win, but if you, fight, if you fight, you've got the opportunity of, of winning, and we're stronger together. Uh, united, yeah, united we stand, divided we fall. So clap, we call you claps, don't pay bills, and thank you. I know hundreds of people that work there, and I know what they've been through in the last six months. They've been to hell and back. And you've got to be, have an honest debate. Let's have an honest debate about what's going on. I went out and clapped NHS workers, but it wasn't just that, that's just the start in it, that's a public show of appreciation. I must admit, I was completely dumbfounded when Prince Charles went out and clapped NHS workers in Balmoral, when he owns 55,000 acres of land, and nobody would have been within three miles of his clapping. <laughs> and that's, that's the other side of the spectrum, isn't it? That is just propaganda about what's going on. What's going on? NHS workers, I can say what they can't say. NHS workers have spent six months trying to get PPE, trying to get the right PPE. NHS workers have spent six months living in flats or with other, in other people's premises so they don't do things that are wrong. NHS workers, every NHS worker has worked hundreds of hours more than they should have done. Yeah. I don't want to clap them. I'm not interested in clapping them. What I'm interested in, from last Saturday, pensioners have to pay £157.50 for the TV licence. And if you're in the House of Lords, you can do a visual meeting and your expenses will be £162.50. And when they confronted the government about that, they said, well, if you can't watch the telly, listen to the wireless. Now, that's not what it's about, is it? Them people, they're like health workers, they've been isolated. N NHS workers are frightened, they're worried, they're underpaid, and they're not interested in somebody saying you've done a good Woo! job, thank you very much. That's the same on, thing yeah. they said when people came back from the First World War. You've done a good job, but yeah, there's yeah. no house for you, there's no job for you, there's no money for you. We'll but we're not having that. When Oscar Wilde came to this country, when he first came to this country, he said, the first thing I knew about England was that people are paid in inverse proportion to their usefulness. And it, does everybody know? Everybody's heard this conversation. I'm not being disrespectful. Everybody's heard it. Oh, well, they're only a cleaner. They're only stacking shelves. They're only sleep, sweeping their own. That isn't the name of the game. What you should be saying is they're only a hedge fund, hedge fund manager. What do they do? I'll tell you the mood in this country. I'll absolutely tell you the mood in this country. The mood in this country is we want to get back to normal. That is the mood yeah. it? everywhere. Yeah. But the back to normal's got to be our normality, not the normality that they want us to return to. They want us to return to a normality which is about who's going to pay the billions of pounds that's been paid out in subsidies over the last six months. We want that money to go to NHS workers because we owe them big style. Thank you. I'm home from York on my own, but Jem convinced me. Years ago, as a child, I went on the anti rights war rights for parents. And one of them was the biggest march in history in this country. Obviously, I can't do that during COVID. But what we 
we can do is all stand up. If anything that happens, we're here and we've said we've stood up to that. We can't, if nothing happens, we've at least stood up to something. because I wanted to make a difference, I wanted to see a bit of change. Now, we have had some successes, we've overturned some of the redundancies by taking management head on with appeals, and we campaigned the PCS union, made a successful campaign to keep Southport, our office in Merseyside open, and that job remain, that job, that office remains open today with scores of jobs saved. <laughs> now, I'm not just here to talk as an employee of the NHS, I'm also a patient, a user of the service, and I can honestly say I owe my life to the NHS. I had life-saving heart surgery twice at the Glenfield Hospital in Leicester. Can we have a round of applause for the Glenfield Hospital in Leicester? Thank you. So, uh, for those who don't know, Glenfield specialises in both adult and children's heart surgery. So, the most, you know, some of the most poorly children in the East Midlands. Now, despite that, this Conservative government still tried to shut the hospital down. And I use the word tried because down there in Leicester, we had health workers, trade unionists, community campaigners teamed up under the banner of Save Our NHS. They fought and they won and they kept that hospital open, yeah? In my hometown of Sheffield, let's have a cheer for Sheffield. That was a risky one. In my hometown of Sheffield, the Tory government came after our hospitals as well. We had the minor injuries unit was under attack and so was our walk-in centre. Now once again, health workers and campaigners got together and fought the cuts. Sheffield. Sheffield Save Our NHS is chaired by a dedicated member of the Socialist Party and that group organised and campaigned tirelessly. In the end, they fought and they won. They won the fight and Sheffield kept those NHS assets. So those examples go to show that as a few of our supporters have said today, if you fight, you can win. And today, in over 20 towns and cities, I think the actual number, Anthony, is 35, is it? 35 towns and cities. Uh, people like you are gathering to demand pay justice. 36. Any advances? 32. Um, so, in real terms, we know our pay has been shrinking for 10 years now. People are going to sneer, people may stand against us and say, where's the money for a pay rise going to come from? So let's tackle that head on. Some estimates reckon there are 50 individual billionaires in, this, in Britain. All the estimates are as high as 150. Now, whatever that actual number, we know that these super rich don't earn their wealth in the same way that we do. They don't turn out to work. They inherit it, or they get rich from the hard work of ordinary working class people. We currently have a Tory government who are hell-bent on protecting that wealth, which is held by the super rich elite. We need to get rid of the anti-trade union laws, which puts too much power in the hands of these bosses. And the UK has some of the lowest rates of corporation tax in Western Europe. We know the super rich take so much out of our society. They've got rich by paying low wages, pushing risk onto their workers with insecure and zero hour contracts, while their companies claim tax breaks and government handouts. Now is the time for them to put their hand in their pocket and pay something back. Thank you. Now on the subject of money, I'm just going to talk a little bit about outsourcing in the NHS. A lot of the work on the Trace and Trap Act, Track and Trace app has gone to the private sector. This could be a, a life-saving use of the IT if it's implemented correctly. So they've pushed that IT work out into the private sector while making dozens, if not scores, if not hundreds of people redundant from the IT wing down at NHS Digital. we we'll work that one out. So this tells us that taxpayers' money is being funneled away from the NHS, away from new hospital staff, away from the offices, and it's going into the hands of private businesses. We've seen the same with the fiasco, the despicable farce with the PPE. 
we're talking billions upon billions upon billions of pounds here. Executives, directors and shareholders are literally making a profit out of this deadly pandemic. So yeah, it seems there is money for winning to the private sector bosses. Where's the money for the dedicated, hard-working lifesavers who keep our NHS and care sector running? We need to call for renationalisation of the whole NHS and renationalisation of the wider health and care sector. We know that a well-funded and democratically run NHS can provide well-paid and secure jobs so all NHS and all care workers can enjoy a decent quality of life, a secure retirement and a workload that does not end in burnout. Now let's talk about how we fight. Sorry, I'm going on a bit here. Let's talk about how we fight. I'm going to guess that some of you are a member of a trade union. If you're not, please make that your number one priority when you get home. TUC.org.uk. Find out which is the right trade union for you. Get signed up. Get, get. He's right. Do it now on the phone. Once you're a member of a trade union, please make it your second priority to get active. And when we say active, when we say active, we mean become a rep. Vote in the elections, turn up to the meetings, call out the decision makers in your organisation. How about thinking wor about working to rule? One of our other speakers talked about who here is interested in taking further action. So when, if, when those conversations around industrial action happen, get involved, have your voice heard. Can I wait for that siren? Yeah. My name is uh, Aru. Uh, my name is Alex, I'm a branch secretary of PCS uh, Trade Union. And uh, I work at NHS Digital uh, half a mile that way. Um, I just want to make it clear that I am speaking in a personal capacity today. So yeah, the views are my own and not of my trade union or of my employer. So I'm going to get stuck in. Um, I was absolutely honoured uh, when the organiser of this protest uh, asked me to speak. So can we please have a proper, I mean proper round of applause for Anthony and Gemma and everyone else. Thank you very much. Uh, shout out to... Socialist Party for letting the use of PA, but every trade council, everyone is turned in. Keep our NHS corporate, represent, keep the flag flying high over there. Thank you. So I'm going to talk briefly about the situation in NHS Digital. Uh, the organisation has performed excellently and has been critical to the COVID response. We created the shielded patients list to protect the most vulnerable citizens during the COVID outbreak. We helped deliver the infrastructure. Oh my God, look at me now. Okay. I've been a healthcare assistant for a decade. I'm also a single woman with three children. Being any kind of healthcare professional, whether you're a nurse, a physio, a healthcare assistant, it is hard, it is emotional, it is dangerous. And that was before COVID. Now is the time the government and people to stand together. I don't see it as just about getting a pay rise, although that is a big part of it. I see it as being respected like other professions have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nurses go through a degree, they you know they train just like any other person, any other profession. Um, if it wasn't for people like this. Um, in September, I'm actually going to be starting to train as an operating okay. department okay. practitioner. <laughs> and if it wasn't for people like this, I wouldn't be in a position to do that. So if that little change that you've done to bring back the reintroduced bursary has brought me back, I'm one person, imagine what everyone can do if the tuition fees were scrapped. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Nigel from York TUC. Yay! We're here in solidarity with the all the NHS staff um, today, and thanks for coming, everyone. Um, what I'd say to start with is, if you fight, you can win, and, it, it, you, and if you don't fight, you won't win. It's as simple as that. When they introduced, tried to introduce a private company in York to run the facility staff, we were told by some union people that workers there would not go on strike. They did go on strike. 
in Bradford, the worker struck against the limited liability company and won that fight by taking strong and decisive action. Now, I'm here because I have a lot of friends and contacts in China. And this is where it started. But look at the difference between the way this horrible regime in China, a police state, an awful regime that abuses its people, has actually looked after its people through this crisis. They have three to one million death rate, and that's fairly genuine. Because they've reacted to this crisis lit and reacted to it by resourcing it and caring about their people. I'm talking about a police state here. Compare that to our government. It's absolutely disgraceful what our government has done. All the deaths in the NHS and most of the deaths in the country are their responsibility. Chris Whitty and Varley stood with Boris Johnson at the start and told lies to the British people. They deliberately distorted the situation because they weren't resourced to challenge it. And initially they did have a plan, there's no question, for herd immunity. That's back. We've got to make sure that we don't allow those monstrous people to determine our future. And as some of the speakers have already said, We've got to make sure, after this is over, if it's ever over, that we continue to fight, join our unions, and force our unions to take decisive, strong action. And our politicians. Because if we wait for them, they will not act. And it's brilliant people like this who are the future, not them. Their hearts and they fought with their brains. They didn't have bullets, and just with a mask. We sent them to war with one simple task. To show us the way, to lead and inspire us, to protect us from harm and fight off this virus. It couldn't be stopped by our bulletproof vests, an invisible enemy invading our chests. So we called on our weapon, our soldiers in blue. All doctors, all nurses, your country needs you. We clapped on our streets, hearts bursting with pride as they went off to war and we stayed inside. They struggled at first as they searched for supplies, but they stared down that virus in the whites of its eyes. They leaped from the trenches and didn't think twice, so never came back the ultimate price. So tired, so weary, yet still they fight on. As this virus is beaten and the battle is won, the many of us owe so much to so few. The brave, the bold, our heroes in blue. So let's line the streets and remember our debt. We love you, our heroes, lest we forget. Who here has been less than 10 years? Okay, there's a fair few of you. I've been in the NHS 35 years now. No, 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 poor, please. Because over those 35 years, I've seen so many changes. I've seen Margaret Thatcher create care in the community, sending people out onto the streets to be cared for. Cared for. I've seen was go from Whitley Council to banding, from banding to Agenda for Change. And in all that time, all I've ever seen is oppression of nurses and NHS staff. I have never, ever in my 35 years felt more like saying it and walking away. I would walk away today with my head hung low because of the way that these guys and everybody has been treated by the government. And it is the government, nobody else. Those who've been less than 10 years, I feel very, very, very heartily for you. My career is nearly ended. Yours is just at the start. This government has got to do more. This government has got to show that because we've gone, not just through this pandemic, but through 10 years of austerity, 
for the past 10 years we've gone through a real time pay cut. That pay deal we had two and a half years ago was worth nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. It didn't even meet, didn't even get close to the pay that we've lost over those years. If I was to have the pay that I was entitled to in the rewards that we should have got over those 10 years, I wouldn't be standing here today. Some of you know me as the naughty rhyming nurse. Here we go. The clap's now a distant echo. Your rainbows are fading too. Do you still remember what the few have done for you? Can you browse? You can now browse around the shops again and the pubs, they gush with beer. All those glorious plaudits now suddenly have a different cheer. They're still working on the front lines, still caring day by day. But here's the real big headline. The virus hasn't gone away. So stay within your bubbles and stick within the rules. In all this, please remember though, who steers this ship of fools. They sit aloft in Whitehall and often have their say. When compared to humble NHS staff, they get much greater pay. We do not ask Sorry, we do not ask for much, you know, for what we do is care. All we ever ask for is a pay deal that is fair. Through 10 years of austerity, our pay you chose to freeze. 40,000 fewer nurses, you nearly brought us to our knees. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. But still we stand here stoically. So what is now to do? We ask the general public, please, please stand up for the few. Everybody said we cannot do this without your support. Every single last one of you needs to get out there, needs to put the word out, needs to talk to your families, not just your colleagues. In fact, those police officers over there, talk to them. Anyone walking down the street, talk to them. You're in a shop, talk to somebody else. Don't care who you talk to, just talk to them. This is the best tool you have. Because without this, you get nothing. I once stood on a podium at a conference and stayed silent for three and a half minutes because they'd taken away the voices from the International Nurses Forum. And mental health nurse. <laughs> Um, I would just like to start by saying that this is my own personal thoughts and feelings and not that of my employer, just thought I'd get that out there. So as I said, I'm a mental health nurse and I work in a really specialised area. Um, an example of my day-to-day -day role pre-COVID-19 would look like, I'm assuming, the majority of the nurses. So lots of handovers, lots of physical ops, lots of one-to-one -one observations with patients who are high risk of suicide and self-harm as well. There's also supervision I have to do, I do one-to-ones in terms of psychological support with my named patients and that which do aren't my named patients as well. Um, I've got to do my notes, I've got to do supervision, I've got to introduce bank staff to the wards, um, agency staff, there's a lot of stuff. And I also have to go respond to attack alarms on other units, you know, and provide support to them got to supervise student nurses who are on placement as well um, and that's usually what my 13 hour shift looks like um, but the most of the time it ends up being a lot longer than 13 hours um, and I receive less pay than what I do with being a supermarket manager. The area I work in does often involve aerosol generating procedures and we've been greatly affected by COVID-19. We are required to wear full PPE of the aprons, gloves, masks and goggles at all times. This has meant that certain roles that we previously were able to carry out, such as supportive meal times with um, patients by eating alongside them, has been stopped. We are no longer able to carry out the interventions that are greatly needed and valued by the patients who we support. Morale has been low across the entirety of the NHS recently. We already work extremely hard and we now have the added pressure of a global pandemic with working environments changing rapidly and, in, and into uncharted territory. Currently, um, on my ward where I work, we have a lot of staff vacancies for both nurses and healthcare positions. This means that day to day we are often using bank and agency workers to fill gaps in the staff team. 
Although it is great that we have a backup, unfortunately they don't possess the clinical skills and knowledge needed to best support the patients in the area that I work in and it's a huge, huge struggle. Um, when COVID hit, we were asking nurses who were in their retirement to come back and help work throughout this global pandemic. Do we not need to take a look and say, hang on a minute, why are we needing to do this? Why is there such a shortage? Nursing is an essential skilled job which you have to undertake a university degree to carry out. We have been called heroes throughout this pandemic, yet we are also so undervalued and underappreciated by the government. It has been proven that the, the country cannot run and survive without us, yet we are being left behind, limping and broken. There is a huge shortage of nurses, and as I pointed out earlier, my ward is short-staffed. Pay is what we deserve and I can assure you these posts will be filled. When I heard that not all NHS workers were receiving the pay rise, which included my profession of nursing, I was broken, I cried out of frustration and anger and I did look at other jobs which were out of the nursing profession completely. I thought why the hell should I have to work my hardest and not be appreciated for it? Not by the public who've been incredible, but by the people who run this country. I am held accountable for all the decisions that I make at work and I think that they should be too for the appalling way that they think they can treat the NHS.